I have no relevant disclosures. Uh, so, uh, evolution of endovascular treatment in ischemic stroke. Uh, thanks to the neurointerventional leaders, pioneering work, uh, some high quality clinical trials and uh, innovations from uh, the industry and industry support, we can say mechanical thrombectomy is a standard of care. It's very exciting. But uh, where do we go from here? So how does the future look like? This was kind of addressed yesterday uh, by Dr. Liebeskind and uh, Dr. Nogueira, kind of touched upon. And we know the focus primarily was on patient selection. I wouldn't say the focus is shifting, but we are focusing for sure from patient selection now, uh, focusing more on procedure selection or technique selection, and also product or device selection. So let's talk about procedure or technique selection first. So a direct aspiration first pass technique, ADAP technique. Uh, it is a technique where contact aspiration first um, is used primarily to perform mechanical thrombectomy, and we know it is safe, effective, efficient, equitable, and has tremendous global utility. I'll touch upon that later. So the ASTER study, the contact aspiration was the stent retriever for successful revascularization. This was the first study to evaluate aspiration as the first line treatment. The hypothesis of this study was to establish superiority. Uh, more than 15% modified Tiki 2B to 3 reperfusion with aspiration compared to stent retriever technique. And uh, the study found no significant difference in successful revascularization. So the outcome was primarily you know, angiographic outcome. And what does the data look like? So modified Tiki 2B3, 85% versus 83%, no significant difference. And modified Rankin score, 0 to 2 at 90 day, again, no significant difference. Coming to mortality and symptomatic ICH at 24 hours, again, no significant difference. However, in the exploratory analysis, the finding was the time from clot contact with the reperfusion catheter to revascularization was significantly shorter. It's 13 minutes versus 22 minutes. Again, uh, I need to mention it was an exploratory finding, but still significant. Um, the next study, COMPASS. It's a study looking at aspiration versus stent retriever thrombectomy as first-line approach for LVO in stroke. So the outcome was modified Rankin scale, so a functional outcome. 69% um, versus 67%. This was significant, and this was a non-inferiority analysis. Tiki 2B with primary modality, 83% versus 81%. No difference again. Tiki 2B at final assessment, again, no significant difference between contact aspiration first versus stent retriever. Tiki 3 at final assessment, 38% versus 29%. Higher, but again, not, no significant difference. Mortality, symptomatic ICH at 24 hours, again, no significant difference. This time, however, one of the secondary endpoints, a time from groin puncture to Tiki 2B to 3, 22 minutes versus 33 minutes, a good 10-minute 10 uh, 10 difference there. It was significant. Um, so the design of this one, randomized clinical trial, um, had a non-inferiority uh, design and also a functional outcome was assessed as the primary endpoint. This study also went on to show cost-effective superiority of aspiration first over stent retriever. And uh, further evidence on use of large bore catheters um, for aspiration uh, thrombectomy from com coming from the complete registry data. And uh, Dr. Zaidat, Dr. Woodard, Dr. Fifi, and Dr. Hassan, the PIs for this registry. So what the data suggests was faster procedure times and higher rates of successful revascularization using large bore catheters for aspiration thrombectomy. And this is the data. And uh, you have JET-7, the large bore catheter, using ADAP technique comparing to the um, other uh, aspiration catheters uh, in, the, in the line. Um, and the modified Tiki 2B to 3 first pass rate was 66.7% compared to 60.7%. So larger bore catheters perform better. Modified Tiki 2B to 3, 
in the post penumbra system 84% versus 82.8% and uh, the modified rankin scare uh, 0 to 2 at day 90 again no significant difference there uh, the time um, from onset to uh, modified tiki 2b to 3 uh, no difference between uh, the two catheters a little slightly lower with the large bore catheters uh, puncture to modified tiki 2b to 3 uh, the mean time taken was 24.5 minutes versus 34.3 minutes um, and it was significantly different between the large bore catheter the jet 7 and the non jet 7 catheters in the lineup so moving on from procedure or technique selection to product and catheter product and catheter selection so Selecting the device based on vessel size, it's kind of indi individualizing the aspiration treatment to the patient. We have a wide range of uh, aspiration catheters that offer ability to individualize that treatment based on vascular anatomy, which is vessel size and vessel, vessel tortuosity, and also location of the uh, occlusion. So on the right, you have the large bore catheter, you know, 072 catheter, the JET7. And uh, on the left end, you have the smallest uh, reperfusion catheter, which is still 035 catheter, the 3 max. And the new um, aspiration catheter in the lineup is the JET D, D for distal. So being able to go to the clot in M2 and uh, perform re aspiration thrombectomy um, is the added benefit with this JET D catheter. And the, all, the other advantage of uh, having a, a range of aspiration catheters is being able to use coaxial uh, ability to you know, uh, perform aspiration thrombectomy. So JET7, uh, 072 lumen, has 20 transitions which allow for beautiful trackability, superior flexibility, we'll talk about that because of the soft tip, enhanced pushability of the catheter and the PTFE liner throughout the catheter full length, so this is a nice video. Uh, oops. Can we play the video, please? It was playing up there. So 1.5 centimeter distal tip, and you can see um, how flexible the distal tip is and without compromising the lumen of the catheter, no kinks at the bend. Um, so this allows the ability to track uh, uh, in tortuous uh, vascular uh, anatomy of the ICA. All right. All right, and this is the softest catheter that is out there, 33% softer than the other catheter on the market. It's Jet D, the distal reperfusion catheter, 1.65 millimeter outer diameter, longer, 1.38 centimeters, allowing us to go into the M2s. Uh, large aspiration lumen, 054. Uh, op optimal tracking profile, um, uh, helping us with the tortuous anatomy. And also, again, being able to use a 3 max softer, uh, sorry, smaller reperfusion catheter uh, or a microcatheter velocity through it. And this is the Penumbra engine, uh, which now offers uh, higher aspiration pressures. Um, with one touch. All right. And can we place this video, please? Uh, this is the aspiration technique that is rec oh, can you go back? Yep. This is the aspiration technique that is recommended, flipping the switch versus turning on the uh, pump by pushing the button. So on the top there, you see the uh, switch is open, and you turn on the pump. That's how long it takes to you know, aspirate the clot. Now that technique, push the button technique versus flip the switch technique, where the pump is on, it's primed, and you switch, uh, uh, turn the switch on real quick. And, uh, and this study, looking at the thrombus, uh, thrombus removal force, um, the study done at Mount Sinai, shows the uh, maximum pressure using the penumbra engine higher than the prior uh, lineup uh, in the penumbra uh, max pump. Now moving on to cases, we talked about uh, procedure selection, we talked about product selection, let's uh, talk about how these perform. 
So this is a 63-year-old female with acute left MCA clinical syndrome, uh, NIHS has 22 at presentation, evidence of LVO on CTA. There is the CTA, and you can see the cutoff of M1 on the left side. Uh, M1 segment occlusion, got IV TPA within the three-hour window, and that is the AP and lateral projections of uh, angiographic runs of the left ICA. And you can see the M1 cutoff and uh, uh, post-procedure uh, angiogram AP and lateral uh, showing recanalization of the vessel and reperfusion. So uh, the device is used, neuron max guide catheter, uh, the aspiration catheter JET7, extra flex, a micro catheter, O27, uh, micro wire, and penumbra engine. ADAP technique performed, first pass, TK3 reperfusion. And uh, I want to point out, same patient, same case, it can, you, you can see the uh, anatomy there, the ICA tortuosity, uh, better appreciated in the lateral projection there. And you can see the tip of the JET7 catheter all the way at the clot, performing the aspiration. Uh, this is the MRI of that patient, NIHS2 post-procedure from 22, and NIHS0 day two. One more case, 55-year-old female with right MCA symptoms, NIHS15 at presentation, evidence of LV on CTA, there's the CTA image, right M M1 cutoff, uh, TPA again within the three-hour window, that's the AP projection, lateral projection, of the uh, angiographic runs and the post-procedure, AP and lateral. Again, same setup, neuron max guide catheter, penumbra jet seven, extra flex for aspiration. Uh, here, I used only the microwire. There are different techniques to do it, but it's recommended to use a microcatheter to allow um, uh, uh, easy tracking of the uh, aspiration catheter, and that's the standard technique, and that's what is recommended. Penumbra engine, an ADAP technique, first pass, TK3 reperfusion. That's the MRI with some uh, a peri sylvian uh, restitic diffusion, and uh, at the end, at discharge, the stroke skill was zero. Uh, case three, 85-year-old female with right MCA syndrome, and NIHS is 12. Uh, neuron max, uh, aspiration catheter, JET7, extra flex. Again, I used a 016 microwire. Penumbra engine, ADAP technique, first pass, TK3 reperfusion. That's the post-procedure AP and lateral projections. And you can see the anatomy there, relatively straightforward IC anatomy. And uh, I, I believe I used only the wire again. Um, case four, 82-year-old female. Uh, you can again appreciate the ICA tortuosity. So these cases were selected for a reason, so to demonstrate the ICA. I'm sure uh, we all have seen even more tortuous anatomy, but goes on to show how the catheter, the aspiration catheter, can track uh, in this tortuous anatomy. And, uh, for this particular case, uh, 054, the uh, uh, aspiration catheter was used, uh, Jet D, microcatheter, microwire, penumbra engine, aspiration thrombectomy, first pass, TK3. That's the post uh, uh, procedure. Uh, case five. Uh, uh, courtesy of Dr. Osman Kozak, I selected this case for a reason, uh, again, to show the tortuosity and the thrombus burden. 48-year-old uh, male admitted for, uh, to the hospital for TIA, uh, left-sided weakness which resolved, NIHS zero. MRI in the next day showed a punctate infarct in the left temporal lobe, but the patient became comatose the next day. Stat CTA showed vertebral and basilar artery occlusions. Here are the pictures. On the extreme left, you have the uh, subclavian run showing vertebral artery origin stenosis. You can hardly see any flow, anti-grade flow in the vertebral artery. The patient had a left vertebral artery, which ended in pica. So angioplasty was performed um, as the first step. And you can see uh, the V2 and V3 segments of the vertebral artery showing distal vert occlusion on the right. And uh, using JET7, extra flex, aspiration was performed for vertebral, basilar, and PCA occlusions. You can appreciate the, um, uh, the catheter tip there on the right image, and it shows still some thrombus burden in the right PCA. And if you pay attention to the left PCA, the P2 segment is still occluded. So complete uh, recanalization of the vertebral, basilar, and on the next image, that's the thrombus that was retrieved. And uh, on, on the image on the right, you can see the right PCA is completely open, and the left is also open, but since it was a distal thrombus P2 segment, a stent retriever was used. 
Again, the JET7, you can see right there at the distal, at the tip of the basilar artery. So the ability to perform aspiration and also deploy a strength retriever to perform your procedure, uh, that's the benefit. Um, and on the way out, a balloon-mounted stent to address the vertebral artery origin stenosis. And that's the MRI uh, of that patient. In the brainstem and the cerebellar hits discharge NIHSS 7 from being comatose. So aspiration thrombectomy, a quick uh, a global perspective. So the incidence of stroke uh, in for 100,000 people uh, for, in, for year 2016, that's the global map from the Global Burden of Diseases uh, paper in Lancet this year. And uh, we know the incidence of stroke is about, was about 10 million in 2016, and it's growing and expected to be 14 million. And that 70% of the global incidence, 81% uh, of the overall uh, DALIs lost, 75% of all stroke-related deaths. Where are these happening? These are happening in the developing countries. So both together, the stroke burden and also the increasing incidence in the developing world. The eight standardized stroke incidence rates in the low-income and middle-income countries exceeds about approximately 20% compared to high-income countries. So using a cost-effective stroke therapy um, uh, to address this um, is, I think, the way to go. And that's why the aspiration thrombectomy has a huge global utility and uh, has global implica treatment implications. And uh, aspiration thrombectomy offers potential for better resource allocation and evidence-based stroke care planning. So in summary, procedure and product selection. So procedure selection, aspiration as first-line thrombectomy. No difference in reperfusion compared to strength retriever use. Non-inferior functional outcome, safe, lower device cost, faster treatment time, global utility, um, and uh, as far as it, product selection or catheter selection, uh, with the JET-7 and JET-D aspiration catheters that offer increased flexibility, better trackability, distal access, and enhanced aspiration with the uh, increased pressures that penumbra engine offers. That's all I have to have. Say here.